The test consists of 50 genes, the PAM50 so-called, and this firstly um, compares the genes, the expression of those 50 genes with what are called here on the left-hand side, centroids. I think of these as the archetypal um, pro-signa, or rather intrinsic subgroups, the luminal A, B, basal I can her twin roots. And it says, how close is this particular, um, this particular profile to any one of those types? And then on, you see in the middle, the score is then composed of the correlation of that, um, that particular unknown with each of those centroids. We then add a feature, which is the proliferation score. And then also the tumor size comes in to give you an overall score. The risk is then calculated, as you can see on the right-hand side, from continuous estimates, the ROR, the risk of recurrence score. And that is different according to whether the patient is no positive or no negative. And I'll illustrate that on these next two slides. Now the oncotype is, of course, somewhat different with the genes it's selected. There are 16 informative genes and there are five so-called reference or housekeeper genes. The biggest group is the proliferation group there and you can see that on the, on the equation on the right hand side, the coefficient for the pro proliferation group is the highest at 1.04. So many people seem to believe that the uh, proliferation is the driving force for the oncotype DX. But one feature that's really important and few people seem to appreciate, but I'll go through again a little later, is that this proliferation group is thresholded. So if the result is less than 6.5, score of less than 6.5, then the proliferation group score is considered 6.5. And in the trans attack group, only 20% of patients actually had a risk, um, a proliferation score rather, that was greater than 6.5. So in 80%, proliferation was in fact uninformative. The relationship of the scores with proliferation Eastern pathways. So on this left-hand side of the top panel, the, we show the relationship between the recurrent score proliferation module and the overall recurrent score. And below that, the recurrent score estrogen module and the recurrent score overall. And you can see that there is a really quite poor correlation between proliferation and recurrent score somewhat surprising for me initially and for other people. And when we do this thresholding I was talking about earlier on, the residual number of patients here do have a slightly better relationship with proliferation, but it's still much poorer than the relationship we see with the estrogen module. So it appears that the against um, expectation of most people's um, thinking about this, the recurrent score is driven more by estrogen module, substantially more by estrogen module than the proliferation. On the right hand side, we show the ROR, the prosigna, and how much that relies on proliferation estrogen. In fact, the, the ROR is dominated by proliferation. And here we have the endopredict proliferation and estrogen module. And in fact, there's a somewhat intermediate position for the endopredict. I think these data are surprising and they do explain why these, te these tests differ and why one of them may perform somewhat better than the other. 